right, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Pinchal's Garage. And on today's episode, we're going to learn how to build a VR6 head uh, using Technonics Tuning, pretty much HD uh, valve system with SuperTech valves and HD springs and titanium retainers. So we're building this head for boost. So we got to do it right. So currently right now, we got the new Technonics Tuning uh, stem seals. We got them in blue and brown, exhaust and intake. Pretty much straightforward. Blue is exhaust and uh, brown is intake. So, uh, using a 10 millimeter socket, uh, if you don't have a stem seal tool, this works just as good uh, on this style stem seal. There's some other ones that won't work. A 10 mil will actually fit just right on here. You'll see that it just passes it and uses the little. Um, Pretty much lip on the seal right here it gives you just enough so you can push this sucker down and get it done so you can do it by hand and then you want to tap them down just slightly with the rubber mallet call it done you don't want to hit them too hard uh, and just inspect make sure it looks like it hit the bottom if it doesn't you just double check them one more time. And you should be good. You're going to repeat the process uh, 10 more times and then we're going to work on installing the new valves. I like using the 10 mil socket because it just holds them beautifully in place. Now, before I go any further, uh, how do you know which one's intake and which, which one is exhaust? Well, intake's going to be the large valve, and exhaust is going to be the small valve. So you'll see here, intake, exhaust. If you look here, um, exhaust, intake, and then you can look right through here, just double check. Um, always double, triple check all your work. Uh, before installing these because they're not easy to get a hold of and they're very very delay on parts right now these parts actually took months to get because of the uh, all the um, delays from out of the country so just uh, just a quick heads up on that too Like it went all the way down. They're hard to tell if they're all the way at the bottom because you can't see underneath here. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Bring this head closer to you guys. Now, since we're on now on this side, the pretty much the head rotate. You can either do it this way in reverse or rotate the head. That way, if you feel better uh, or more comfortable doing it, I'm gonna rotate the head. That way, um, it goes back again to intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. We'll confirm by flipping the head back over. Actually, no, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake. Sorry, and we'll flip it over, and you'll see exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake. Same on this side intake exhaust so that way you just you just have a simple little rhythm going it's not necessary but it's up to you guys
Sometimes you get an audio, auto, audible difference in noise when you push down. Like that. That's how you know you hit the bottom. Sometimes you don't. It's hit or miss. And you just go one more time on all of them. All done now to start our first set of valves I already got them out so got these two guys you got your intake and your exhaust I mean exhaust intake <laughs> my bad turn this over now since these uh, heads are straight flat and they're not actually domed on the inside, uh, this makes life substantially better. Uh, not like on the 1.8Ts where you have a, pretty much a, a dome thing, so you got to put a uh, rag underneath it to hold compression down on these guys. Not the case for this guy, so it's for this setup. So uh, that's done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put in uh, our springs. Got our set of springs here. All right. So before you put them all the way in and just leave them in there, you want to put some assembly lube in there. And go, go, go crazy with it. It's okay. You're allowed to go a little nutty with assembly lube. It's not going to hurt anybody. All right. The more the merrier. Uh, we use Lucas uh, High Performance Assembly Lube with all our builds. I love it. It works really, really well. And now we have our retainers. These are titanium retainers, so these are definitely high performance. And then now we got our keepers that we gotta smush in. Okay, from this shot, you should be able to see right there. That is the angle. This is the uh, pretty much the valve that I gotta do right now. To put in the uh, the new uh, retainers here, so I'm going to show you how they work. Uh, so here's a retainer, and these are keepers. Let's see what over here. <laughs> keepers, retainer. These are tapered on the inside, and these are also tapered as well. Okay, they only go in one way. To lock the valve in place just like that if I put them in the other direction they don't even fit and they won't even lock correctly they should go pretty dang flush down here okay so this is a one two groove keeper uh, technically three um, 
uh, the valve has three grooves, but this has two inside of it, but it's technically a three groove uh, keeper and retainer. This is a titanium retainer. So now I'm going to show you guys how it's done. So right there, okay. The trick is you need a fly head screwdriver. You cram one of them in there. Man, I just threw that in there. It just fell right in place. That's dumb. I don't know how that worked. That's not supposed to do that. I might be lucky today. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, so they're both in there. So if you try to put them in there, it's just they're going to fall out. You see? What you got to do is you got to hold them down. You got to push them against the valve. Make sure they stay in, in actual place. And this is the annoying, the annoying part because this is what gets actually difficult. What you have to do is get them to sit on the, the valve. So I got one, like half a one. Now what happens is that as you're pushing down, um, Sometimes the uh, valve will go to an angle and not sit correctly. And that, that's, that's going to be a problem you're going to have with all of them. Unless you have the appropriate like tool for this. Um, it makes life just a tad bit difficult. Uh, it's not too hard. It's just it gets very annoying uh, quickly. Um, some people get just get discouraged and they'll just take it to a shop. You just got to be patient. You'll get a rhythm You really got to manhandle it pushing it down because uh, if you don't you're gonna you're just gonna suffer Trying to see if I have another way. I need a bit more leverage is my issue. Or more angle. Let's see if I get a little bit more angle. And you don't want a screwdriver that's really magnetized. You just want it slightly magnetized. Alright, finally got it in. You guys can see from here. It's in. Nice and seated. Pretty much repeat the process 11 more times and then you're done. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to get back and we'll get this taken care of really quick. And we're going to show you guys pretty much the rest of the way. It, it's just a really tedious and slow process. Most people just, again will discourage so quickly uh, in doing this because it's such an annoying process. 
once you have one done, throw a little bit of assembly lube in there. Don't be shy in using assembly lube. It is phenomenal for everything when you're building an engine. Just use it. Don't be scared not to use it. It's the most beneficial thing to your motor, especially when you're building one from scratch with brand new hardware. All right. So here we go. Now we got exhaust and intake done. Now we're down to the next one. One. Two. If you want to go down the line and finish them up. That way you just make the head assembly a little bit faster uh, when working your way pretty much to the other side of the head and then just finish it off. Now we went over one millimeter on uh, on the um, on both valves, so these are much bigger by a millimeter. It's just going to help the intake and the exhaust breathe so much more air on these motors. That's one of the biggest issues with these engines is that they don't breathe as well as a like a, like a 24 valve. Uh, that's why they love boost. I don't know why the magic the the magical. Uh, numbers on these thing is just it's just crazy how these engines love boost you just got to do a little bit of upgrading and it's just that's it so we're gonna readjust our um, tool here That way we can do this side. All right, so we're now on the next cylinder, and then we're going to do, see if we can fit it over here, but we're just doing them two at a time, and then until they're all done, and then we're going to put the, um, the lifters in, we'll set the cams in, and then the head's done. Then we're going to work, uh, our, next, our next DIY, we'll show you guys how to do the bottom end, and then pretty much slap it all together, put it in the car, run that for a while. We have to break in the motor with no boost. I'm not a fan of trying to just slap some boost in it and then drive it like that. I'm probably going to drive it NA uh, for about 300, 400 miles. It's going to have no power whatsoever, uh, mainly because it's not going to have, it's going to drop its compression even more. So um, should be fine. I mean, I'll, I might throw the turbo on it. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I'm not at that point. Once I get the engine all put together, I already bought a turbo and a manifold and all the other goodies that we need. But my thing is, is that like, if I do that immediately, then I have to really, really focus on the intercooler and all the fueling and all that. And it just takes longer for the break-in period to happen. I can break in the motor with an NA setup while I build my intercooler setup, build my fueling, build, build my intake setup, you know, have all that ready to put in. And then the motor's broken in, and then we just slap everything back on. Pull the motor out and slap it all on and throw it back in the car. I think that's a more efficient way. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, but that's just how I do things. All right. So we finished uh, one side. So we got three cylinders done. So two, four, six valves. 
now we're working on pretty much the other three sets. Um, it's two, four, six intake exhaust, intake exhaust. Uh, the springs are not directional, so just throw them in there. Throw some assembly lube. Put the uh, the retainer. The retainer is a directional retainer, so the retainer. So they are designed to go in in one specific way. They're uh, they stick out, uh, so they hold the spring, the center spring, and then the outer spring in place. Uh, do not uh, put them in backwards because then they, they won't work correctly. And you'll see here it's stepped. This one's for the small spring, and then the outer step is for the larger spring, just like that. It centers everything for you. Uh, pretty much rinse and repeat. We're down over here to the last six um, six uh, valves here. Once this is down done, we're going to start on the cams. All right, guys. Now that we have pretty much all 12 valves done, uh, already assembly lubed, ready to get lifters. So now let's install some lifters. Let's see. I put them over here somewhere. Here they are. All brand new lifters, intake and exhaust. We're going to build a turbo motor. Build a turbo motor with new parts, guys. Don't cheap out. You will regret it. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Alright, so I might have to lube up the walls in here. Before I put all these in here. These are already been uh, dunked in oil. Uh, your lifters, when you get them uh, brand new, soak them in oil. Uh, the more oil they have, the better. Um, the passages will clog up with a little bit of a uh, with a little bit of assembly loop. You want to have some oil to get the the um, pretty much the oil there sooner than later. So highly recommend uh, soaking your lifters, uh, your brand new lifters in oil. It'll just make life so much easier when you start putting them in. You see, it slid right in now. Take done. Now let's do our exhaust lifters. Again, they were individually wrapped and soaked in oil. Just straightforward. Again, you want them as you want to soak them as much as you can in oil. It's just, I'm sorry if I'm going to sound like a broken record, which I always do, but it's just it's so vital to your build. Um, if you don't, it's just you're gonna have some worn out lifters right at the beginning of your first start. <coughs> All that money, excuse me guys, just, yeah, don't worry about it, just threw it away, right? Who cares about my worn motor that I just built? <laughs> Who cares about breaking periods? Send it, right? The American way. No, we don't do that. We take our time. We use our money that we invest correctly. And break in the motor correctly. Enjoy the motor. And then send the F out of it to the moon once it's fully broken in. That's what we do. I ordered a little bit of, I ordered lightweight lifters because I wanted this uh, motor to rev a little bit faster than stock. Um, so that's why I went titanium. 
<coughs> excuse me, guys. I went HD Springs. I wanted this engine to rev a lot faster than normal. I want it to be able to get hot and not worry about any issues down the road with the valves burning out. All right, now we got cams. Cams are our next uh, big thing here. Uh, we went with Technotics Tuning, street cams. Bring these beauties out. Now what you want to do is slap in some assembly lube here. Come on, I know I have more assembly lube, but Well, we're not going to slap on the cam caps immediately, so bear with me here. Here's that side. We have our cam locking tool, extremely vital, from Autotech. Oh, my bad. These are Autotech cams, not Technonics tuning. These are Autotech uh, street cams. I'm so, ah, uh, sorry guys. I mix, I mix up my brand, so. Yeah, these are Autotech street cams here. So you'll see how that, that shimmies back and forth uh, until uh, you get them locked which is what this is tool this tool's for. Um, and yeah, you lock them over here. I'm trying to remember how we did this. Because they only turn, you gotta get them this way. I'm just trying to remember which direction. It's been a while since I've done a VR. No, come on. Should be this guy right here. Been a while since I've done this, so give me a minute, guys. Here, I know I'm gonna mess this up. I think it's this way. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so you do it like this. Lock the cam like that. Once you bolt it down, this will sit in the correct orientation. Uh, you don't lock the cams um, when they're not bolted on, but this is the actual tool right here and how you lock it. Once it's locked down, you'll see this. these two cams will, the rotation will lock their actual orientation on rotating. Now this only matters, you, you use this locking tool when you're doing the chain, not when you're capping the, um, uh, when you're capping them. So don't use this immediately. Uh, this is for later down the road for your locking tool. Um, the reason why you don't need to use it immediately because if you don't, the cam won't, it won't be friendly for you um, bolting it down. You want to have it sitting down as flush as possible like that. 
Now that way when you put the caps on it, it's easier and you can torque everything to spec and then you rotate the cams to where you need them. So to show you guys here, uh, pretty much the cap uh, orientation. So make sure uh, on the way that we're looking at this head, this side, this is the intake side where the manifold goes on, the intake manifold. This is the exhaust manifold side. Okay, so intake side, exhaust side. And right here is cap number six, number four, and number two. Seven, five, three, and one. Making sure all the arrows are pointing to the left of the engine, not the right. The right side is where the chain and all the pulleys and all the stuff bolt onto uh, for getting the timing done on this side. The left is there's nothing over here. It's just that's how it goes on. All right, guys. So remember, six, four, two, seven, five, three, and one. That is the uh, cam cap orientation. So my next step is to dump all my caps into some chem dip, clean these guys up as nice and new so they match pretty much the engine and not this uh, old oil stain uh, color that's on here anymore. So we might as well refresh everything, make everything look nice and fresh and new before we start torquing everything down. So now that we cleaned all the caps, all the nuts, it's time for some assembly lube. Yeah. Baby. We slap on the nuts and then we torque everything down to spec. Looks a lot better with just literally 10 minutes of um, having them just sit in cam, uh, cam dip. I mean, I could go the extra mile and use a nylon brush to get the rest of it but I mean they look night and day difference from the brown to silver I mean I didn't, I didn't want to go further because I'm running out of time I'm ready to go night night so I'm trying to get this motor done I mean this head done right now I gotta go back to I gotta be up at five in the morning get to work Now right now the head is not timed yet because to time it we got to set the we got to lock it and that's going to be after the caps are on and then we'll go get um we'll get one of the gears on and we'll crank it and get it to set correctly. Uh, these are 13 millimeter nuts. I'm going to grab my ratchet. We're going to lightly tighten them all down. We're not going to torque them yet. Now, I always work my way in to out whenever I work on cams. It's just how I do cams. And I never just go all the way down with them. I tighten them all uh, left and right. And then I go back to the middle to finish it off. Once you feel the cap hit the bottom, leave it alone. Do not tighten it any further. Because these have to be torqued to spec. And you don't want to over torque them. These don't go on very tight. Now what's going to happen since I'm compressing them, I'm compressing the valves a little bit so the, the head's going to be a little wobbly just so you guys know. Now 
Now another option you can do is that you don't have to lock the cams until, okay, if you want to leave your head sitting down on the on your bench and not worry about the valves opening up a little bit because one of the valves are always going to be open. Um, uh, you can always leave it alone right now. And then when you put the head on the actual uh, block, you guys can lock the cams because it's not vital right now. It will be vital when the end when the block is actually on the engine. That's when it's actually going to matter. So it's really up to you guys on how you guys um, go forward from here from after you finish assembling your head. But that choice I will leave up to you. Right now, cams are in, caps are on, correct, uh, in their correct orientation going this way. You tighten the cam caps from in to out, not out to in. Uh, same thing, and then you reverse them. So go uh, opposites, and then go back in. Same with these, op uh, in, out, out, and then out, out, in. That way everything goes down nice and even without any damage. So next is the torque specs uh, for the head. And then we're done assembling our head for now. All right, torque specifications. Torque specs on the head is 15 foot pounds. So again, as my procedure is I do it, and then I go from the middle and work my way out. There's one. That's not very tight, just so you guys know. All right, um, you have a choice, double check them all. Um, should be set to 15. One. There's no seals, by the way. The valve cover gasket is your seal. There's no cam seals for these motors, like a 1.18. Your timing cover is your also your seal for all your other equipment that touches oil. And we are set. This head is now fully assembled. Voila! All right, guys. If you enjoy the content that we create here at Pinch Alice Garage, and you enjoy what we do, what I do, and what all our other friends that join in and doing it with us. Please hit that like, hit that subscribe button, um, hit that notification bell, and become a Patreon member. Uh, becoming a Patreon member does help substantially create content like this. Uh, without your guys' uh, support, I pretty much would not be this far in my YouTube channel. So uh, the more Patreons we get, the better. Uh, we are going to be offering lower tiered Patreon options soon. Uh, the lower tier ones, pretty much, we're going to be figuring out what to do for you guys. Uh, but uh, pretty soon, all Patreons are going to be named on the at the end of the credits um, for all Patreon-sponsored content. So anything we use with Patreon funds, pretty much, will you guys are going to have your name at the end of the title, just like this video. So thank you for watching, everybody. Have yourself a wonderful day. And as always here at Pinch Alice Garage, we're going to break... We're going to fix and we're going to repeat. Deuces and have a wonderful day.